All right, welcome everyone to the most must-see YouTube channel in the world. Welcome to Can We Make Impact Wrestling, the best promotion in Total Extreme Wrestling 2013. I'm your host, the mayor, Jason Smith. In today's episode, Impact Turning Point in-game pay-per-view, we will also discuss the 2010 March pay-per-view Destination X as we continue to chronicle TNA's monthly pay-per-views we're up to 2000 march 2010 it's incredible that we've made it up this far uh also in game as we get set to uh head to the turning point pay-per-view you can see we are still at six regions of c plus importance trying to nab one of these other five and two of these other five to get them uh to uh, c plus or better so that we can jump up into that national status uh, and can try to compete um, with WWE, who are still on top of the mountain. See, we are second. WWE is first. So uh, let's uh, talk first about Destination X 2010 from the Impact Zone in Orlando, Florida. I mentioned briefly uh, yesterday in yesterday's episode that there was a big-time debut in TNA. At this pay-per-view. We'll get to it momentarily. Uh, nine matches on the card. The very first one was a uh, four-way X-Division ladder match uh, featuring Amazing Red, Brian Kendrick, Chris Daniels, and Frankie Kazarian. And uh, really entertaining match. Good way to start out the pay-per-view. Kind of got the ball moving. Uh, set the tone. And uh, Frankie Kazarian would get the win. And here comes the yawning. Long day at work. Long day at work. And the yawns are here, of course. Uh, next match on the card was a surprisingly quick match in the women's division for the knockout championship as Rocky decides he wants to be on camera. Smelled what The Rock was cooking earlier. He was stinky. You were stinky, you know that? Anyway, Tara, the defending champion, would take on Daphne in a very quick match. Not nearly as quick as the global championship match, which would follow it. Uh, the women's knockout championship would be retained by Tara, a.k.a. Victoria, uh, in that match. And the next match on the card was for the TNA Global Championship, the renamed Legends Championship. Um, it is now the Global championship and then it would be renamed again to the television title and then renamed again to the grand championship but rob terry is the current champion taking on magnus rob terry would retain the title in just a minute and a half weird shake-up thing that they did in this one at a pay-per-view very strange uh next up was a tag team ultimate x division match uh, between Motor City Machine Guns, Alex Shelley and Chris Sabin, one of my favorite tag teams of all time, and a team by the name of Generation Me, uh, Jeremy and Max Buck. Now, those uh, that might have given it away to some of you, others probably not so much. Uh, that would be Matt and Nick Massey, a.k.a. Matt and Nick Jackson, the Young Bucks. They went by Generation Me, Jeremy and Max Buck, uh, back in the 2010s during their time with TNA. Next up would be a straight-up tag team match between uh, two-thirds of the band, Scott Hall and Six Pac, uh, taking on Eric Young and the other member of the band, or, you know, former member of the band, Kevin Nash. Here comes a damn yawn again. Uh, Eight-minute match. <clears throat> The band would pick up the win, Scott Hall and X-Pac. So we'll move forward in game uh, and talk about the next match on the card. Uh, Doug Williams, the X-Division champion, would put the title on the line in a singles match uh, against the pay-per-view debuting Shannon Moore. Uh, Shannon had a run uh, in WCW, WWE for a minute. Um... He uh, he made two go rounds in WWE and 
a uh, three go rounds in uh, TNA. Uh, heavily tattooed. Um, he was uh, part of the boy band Three Count uh, with Gregory Helms. <laughs> that was such a stupid stable. Uh, it was uh, Shannon Moore, Evan Courageous, and uh, Shane Helms. And good God, were they just awful. And then the gimmick was, they were talented. Um, he would... Uh, he would also wrestle in Omega. He was a hardcore champion. Um, he was the NWA Wild Side Tag Team Champion uh, with Shane Helms. Then after the buyout, uh, he went to um, developmental for a little while. And uh, after he was in developmental, he won the Heartland Wrestling Association Tag Team Championships with Evan Courageous. Then became one of uh, Matt Hardy's sidekicks during his Mattitude era thing uh, that he did. He was mainly a cruiserweight through his time in the first go-around in WWE. Uh, left in 2005, uh, went to the Indies for a little while. Then came to 2000, uh, TNA 2005-2006 um, and uh, would leave TNA after a year go back to WWE for two years. <sighs> Goodness gracious. And then, uh, he, um, he, he had a, a car accident or something while he was drunk. Um, and that basically ended his time with WWE. Um, and then he would come, uh, the first time around, and then the second time around, he was just released because they never used him, uh, and that would mark his return to the Indies for a year, and then on to uh, TNA. He actually was uh, a staple on TV from January, didn't really make the pay-per-views until March, um, and then by then he had transformed in from that clean, you know, baby face kind of look to that punk covered in tattoos, um, you know, doing a lot of the partying with, with Jeff Hardy, uh, and all of that. He was super close with the Hardys and, uh, to make a short story long, uh, a six minute match for the X division title, Doug Williams would beat Shannon Moore. Now that you know more about Shannon Moore than you probably ever wanted to. Not much going on here. Do, do, do. Yep. Okay. Impact turning point is tonight, but we'll finish up talking about Destination X here. Uh, the TNA World Tag Team Championships would be on the line. The weirdest tag team uh, in the world, the champions, Hernandez and Matt Morgan, would actually beat James Storm and Bobby Roode, Money Inc., uh, again to retain the tag team titles. Uh, next up was a straight-up singles match. Great match. Um... Two guys that I absolutely love their in-ring work. He could be the death of me in this episode, I swear to you. Uh, Kurt Angle would get uh, Ken Anderson to tap uh, in the co-main event. And then last but not least, the TNA World Heavyweight Championship was on the line. The champion, AJ Styles, who would be accompanied uh, to the ring by Chelsea Green and Ric Flair, would take on Abyss, and the match would end in uh, a no contest, allowing for AJ Styles to retain his uh, World Heavyweight Championship and set up a match at lockdown uh, between AJ Styles and um, D'Angelo De Niro, a.k.a. De Pope, a.k.a. Elijah Burke. Anyway, all right, so... Looks like they've got a setup in the southeast region, uh, which, uh, let me check spill over here, southeast, mid-Atlantic, and Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico, mid-Atlantic, okay, cool. So we'll, we'll stick with that and, uh, and run with it at the, uh, what the hell was it, Tad Gormley Stadium, whatever that is. 
Uh, now, curiosity is going to get the better of me here. I, I need to look that up. Tad Gormley Stadium. That is in uh, Nolens, Louisiana. Home to the University of New Orleans Privateers men's and women's track and field teams. So an outdoor event, apparently. We've been doing a lot of outdoor venues. Yeah, it's kind of weird, but uh, whatever. I guess the game doesn't take into consideration the fact that it's November in the United States. So we're going to kick things off with uh, getting all of our uh, championship matches out of the way. The very first one that we have uh, set up is a five-way and I could do possibly an elimination match I think we will really is my arm good is that delicious Rocky Rocky look at me buddy Rocky please stop licking my arm sir okay kiss thank you all right okay so We've got our champion, Phoenix, who's been on quite a roll lately. Uh, TJP, TJP's tag team partner, Will Ospreay, and Kofi Kingston and Consequences Creed of the New Day. So originally, I had Death From Above, Will Ospreay, and TJP, uh, wrestling, New Day, Kofi Kingston, and Xavier Woods, Co Consequences Creed, whatever you want to call him. Uh, and then TJP also would be wrestling for the television championship, and I didn't want him to wrestle twice, so we'll just pile everybody into this match and uh, turn them loose. <laughs> Matt Bloom going to be uh, our road agent for this one. Oops. There we go. Okay. All right. So our television championship is booked. Next up, we've got the women's championship match. And that is, of course, Kana and Kyrie Sane. And we'll put Amy on that, who has done a fantastic job navigating the ladies through some really good matches. All right. Next up is the X Division Championship singles match between our champion, that would be Mr. Rich Swan, and the challenger Jay White. Do you want to get down, dude? Is that what you're trying to do? You're going to get stuck going that way. Here. I'll, I'll help you. Ready? Ready? One, two, three. Ugh. There you go. All right. Okay. So this is for our X Division Championship. Oh. I have our Pomeranian, apparently. When he's asleep, if you touch him, look at him, get anywhere within, like, five feet of him, he will just, like, lose his shit on you. And it's, it's kind of cute because he's little and he thinks he's tougher than he really is, but it's, it's a trip to watch him try to pretend to be tough. Did I do 18 minutes on this one? Yeah, I did. Okay, there we go. And decisive. That's what I want. What are you two getting into over there? Hey, what are you doing? Yeah, uh huh? Okay, uh, we've got our tag team championship match. Between the champs, the Young Bucks, and the Shield. John Moxley, Seth Rollins. Put them together. And have turned them loose on the tag team world. There we go. 
go. And we've got our Grand Championship, Bray Wyatt versus Adam Cole, baby. The Grand Championship. There we go. Open, slow build, decisive finish. Did I slow build this one? No, I did not. Glad I caught that. Because that would have turned out to be an absolute trash match. Okay. Uh, and last but not least, our main event. Marty Skrull and Drew Galloway. For the World Heavyweight championship of the world <laughs> there's our main event all right so now uh, we've got our women's matches just the one additional one that we have booked uh, we had Billy Kay and Io Shirai on the card. Okay, so how many women do I have left here? Because when we started trying to put together some of these matches, they were not going well. I have nine women. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is a three-on-three -three match. I want to try something. We're going to do a three on three ladder match. The winner becomes the number one contender. Whichever team wins, those three will face each other to become the number one contender. Let's do that. Okay. So, on one side. We will have Candice LeRae, Chelsea Green, and Tony Storm. Four women who all look damn near identical to each other. Uh, and then on the other side, we will do Bea Priestley, Shayna Baszler, and Sonya Deville. Three badasses. See, this is what else he does. I don't know if you can hear it. No, he's not going to do it. He goes upstairs from the basement, and then he's too scared to come back down the stairs. And so he'll stand at the top of the stairs, and he'll lose his shit until I go up there and pick him up and bring him down. Or Ashley brings him down, and one of us gets sick of listening to him sit there and whine and cry because he's too much of a pansy to go down the stairs. We've got our women's match. There we go. Oh, he came down the stairs all by himself, I think. Oh, Ash brought him down. Stop going up the stairs when you know you're just going to come right back down here. Dummy. Alright, and then we've got three women left, so we'll do a triple threat match with those three. And 
We'll probably pre-show it just because I don't have confidence in what they're trying to do here. Okay. All out match. Decisive win. There we go. Okay. So women are set. Now let's get into our tag teams. I know we've got one tag match on here. Yeah, Violent Conduct and the Future. We'll go ahead and slide that in there. Alright, so it should be singles matches from here on out. Adam Page, John Moxley can't go because I've got the shield in a match already. Triple threat match with Paige, Omega, and Penta. Johnny Impact and Pac should be next. That'll be a fun one. Eddie Edwards and Bobby Fish. But not least, I am going to do a 30 minute Iron Man match between Cody and Davey Richards. I really hope Davey can go 30 minutes. I have confidence that he can. Here we go. Everybody should be booked out, I think. Double check. Yep. Okay. So everybody's booked. Let's run our pay-per-view here. Glad I put that on the pre-show because it was garbage. Good match to kick off the actual pay-per-view, and Phoenix somehow continues to hold on to that championship despite having five guys, or four other guys, I guess I should say, uh, stand in his way. <laughs> Candice LeRae, Chelsea Green, and Tony Storm won the ladder match. Uh, or rather, via Priestley, Shayna Baszler, and Sonya Deville 
Sonya Deville actually retrieved the item, so those three will square off to be the next number one contender, and we'll find out who the women's champ is uh, going forward momentarily. Violent Conduct in the Future put on a really good match. I'm very pleased with that one. I really like the Future's work. Billy Kay and Io Shirai uh, with a pretty good match. Apparently, I forgot to put the title on the line, but Billy Kay would have retained anyway. Er, so we'll do Billy Kay. Uh, oh, that wasn't a title match anyway. I'm duh. I forgot she lost the title to Kyrie Singh. Duh. But a good match, either way. Inserting Adam Page into that match was not a bad idea. Didn't turn out too terrible. Johnny Impact and Pac was great. Eddie Edwards and Bobby Fish wasn't that good. Bobby Fish was kind of off his game. Great match from Cody and Davey, with Cody picking up the win over Davey Richards. Kana is the new women's champion Kyrie or uh, Asuka beats Kyrie Sane B plus out of the Bucks and the Shield uh, and the Shield are your new tag team champions Rich Swan defends the Impact X Division title in a ladder match which got us a B rating Adam Cole wins the Impact Grand Championship, defeating Bray Wyatt, which means Adam Cole might be cashing in. We'll have to see. And Drew Galloway defeats Marty Skrull in a B-plus match to win the Impact World Championship. So lots of title changes in that one. Phoenix retained... Uh, Rich Swan retained, and that was it. New women's champ, new tag champs, new grand champion, new world champion. B plus rating overall increases our popularity in 37 regions. And we're going to give our props to The Shield and Drew Galloway. Got Drew Galloway. Got Mox and we've got Seth. There we go. All right, so let's check our buy rates for this uh, really positive pay per view. We'll check on where we are with our national importance as well. Uh, tomorrow's episode. We will be talking about TNA Lockdown 2010, the uh, sixth ever TNA Lockdown, uh, live from the Family Arena in St. Charles, Missouri, the April pay-per-view for TNA. Uh, in it, we would see uh, a couple of debuts, it looks like. One Jeff Hardy. And we would see the return on pay-per-view of The Beautiful People and the debut of RVD. So, yeah, that should be very, very interesting indeed. So Turning Point was an excellent show in front of 23,878 fans. Matt Jackson got hurt, suffered a concussion. So that's probably not good. Right. So Matt Jackson got a concussion. We'll check with medical. Matt's gonna be out six days, so we'll Yeah, we'll give him a week off, I suppose. We'll give him one week off with pay. Okay, 
What else we got going on? Rhea O'Reilly. Yes, her grueling schedule where I make her wrestle twice a month. Uh, buy rate for Turning Point, 2.46. Good news there. And still not enough to push those up over the top to that C-plus rating. So we're going to keep cracking at it. Keep trying to get there. Uh, and let's look at uh, whether or not this was a sellout. It was not. We fell just short of a sellout, but uh, pretty good. Buy rate was up slightly from our last pay-per-view, so we're in good shape there, um, and we're getting closer. The roster's looking good. In a couple of weeks, we're going to have Natty Neidhart and Charlotte Flair joining the roster. Two big gets for Impact Wrestling, uh, and so... Stay tuned because we've had a lot of title turnover, and we'll uh, we'll actually look at the titles next week, um, or next episode, I should say. Uh, you know, you've got Bray. Well, we'll just look at them now since I've already got them open. Bray or Adam Cole, a two-time Grand Champion. Phoenix, of course, now in his fourth successful defense, which is the record since we've uh, resurrected this. Kenny Omega also had four defenses uh, in his second reign as TV champion. Uh, Asuka is in her first run as women's champion. Drew Galloway is in his first run as Impact World Champion. And this really hasn't... There hasn't been a sustained world title run since Kofi defended it five times from September to January, everybody else has had one or none. So we really got to find a horse and continue to run with it. The Shield, current champions. Uh, this is another title that's had a lot of turnover, uh, at least not since Phoenix and Penta and their second run with the titles. Now there's a lot of passing it back and forth when we resurrected the title. Then, of course, we have our X Division champion, Rich Swan, in his third run. Uh, neither of his first two runs were really all that lengthy. Uh, so maybe third time's a charm for him to have a nice little run like Marty Skrull did when he held it from September of 2019 to May of 2020. Uh, so long time to hold on to that one for Marty. So we'll... Uh, We'll look at the title picture again in tomorrow's episode, episode number 71. We will talk uh, TNA Lockdown 2010. That's going to do it for this episode. Thank you guys so much for watching. As always, be excellent.